In the late 1940s, Major Uziel Gall invented the Uzi, and it would play a critical role in the defense of Israel and go on to become one of their most popular firearms internationally. The Uzi is now one of history's guns. History remembered and sponsored by the Civilian Marksmanship Program. You undoubtedly recognize this compact submachine gun. It's become a pop culture icon thanks to TV and action movies of the 1980s. Anytime a gang of thugs or the drug lord's henchmen appeared on the screen, Excuse me, is that an Uzi? Why, well, yes, it is. You knew somebody Uzi 9mm would have an Uzi. You know your weapons, buddy. The Uzi submachine gun is certainly one of the most recognizable and most popular subguns of its type ever, ever made. But before it became the weapon of choice for Hollywood bad guys, the Uzi played a critical role in defending the young nation of Israel. Shortly after the Arab-Israeli War in 1948, Uzel Gal, then a captain in the newly formed Israeli Defense Forces, began work on his design for a compact, easy to handle submachine gun. Uh, something that could be used by officers, rear echelon troops, tankers, that sort of thing. Basically what you do is normally use a subgun for. His design was rugged and simple, and its stamped steel parts made it easy and inexpensive to produce. But one ingenious aspect of Gaul's concept set it apart from other subguns before it. The one thing about the Uzi that was so revolutionary for its day was the fact that it used a telescoping bolt. Now, most people see only this much barrel of the Uzi, but in fact, the barrel comes all the way into the receiver and is over 10 inches long. And the reason they get away with that is that the bolt itself, this is considered a telescoping bolt because the bolt face is recessed into the bolt. So this is approximately the same size as your typical submachine gun bolt of the day, but instead of having to be this long and then having to recoil back so that the gun was a lot longer, with the telescoping bolt, what they did was it allowed the bolt to slide over the barrel, reducing the overall length of the gun, but still retaining enough mass to operate safely. The Uzi's recessed bolt also allows for its magazine to be inserted into the pistol grip, creating a compact, ergonomic, and unmistakable form. Magazine capacity uh, fired, depending on caliber, anything from 10 to 50 rounds. It uh, had a, interestingly enough, has a grip safety on it, like, like some auto pistols. Uh, original caliber was 9 millimeter. Later on, it was uh, chambered for everything from 22 long rifle to 45 ACP. Uh, but at the time, of its initial inception, it was 9 millimeter uh, parabellum. It operates from an open bolt in a blowback system with the heavy bolt holding the cycling rate to a manageable but effective 600 rounds per minute. Though unconventional for the time, the Israeli military recognized the potential in this small but potent subgun. Officially adopted in 1951, it was named the Uzi in honor of its designer. At first, it was an obvious choice for use with IDF Special Forces. But by 1956, the Uzi would become general issue for the Israeli military. The Uzi played a role in virtually every conflict fought by Israel from 1956 to 2003, when it was officially retired from use with the Israeli military. But by then, the unique silhouette and compact firepower of the Uzi was already legendary. It's estimated to date there have been at least 10 million of them made. Uzis are still used all over the world today. It's, it's, one, it's one of the most ubiquitous machine guns ever. And with nearly 70 years in use, the Uzi is as popular now as it ever was. The Uzi was also popular with our Secret Service, right up until the mid-90s when it was replaced by the MP5.